You're watching Shadow One News Hour. We are uh, heading straight into your health. In studio, I am joined by the CEO, Texas um, Cancer Center, uh, Catherine Nyongesa. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Uh, were you at uh, KNH today? Yes, I was there for the Breast Cancer Awareness Month and, launch. And uh, this has really uh, taken a backstage for quite some time because the country is currently speaking and raising awareness on COVID-19. But so many people are forgetting that uh, there is that population that is suffering from cancer that we need to talk about. A month has been dedicated to this. It's not just about breast cancer, right? Yes. So, yeah, today we are not... Okay, October generally is a, a, a month dedicated to creating awareness about breast cancer. But uh, usually we also loop in other cancers. So we encourage women to go for screening for both cervical and breast cancer. And we don't leave the men behind and even the children that people should be watching out for common signs and symptoms of cancer. One of the worrying statistics is that uh, up to seven women die from cancer daily True. In, in Kenya. Yes. And um, it paints a picture of a really desperate need for care. Isn't it? True. Um, yeah. Breast cancer is a curable disease if detected early. And that's the more reason we are really pulling together efforts, both government and uh, other private facilities and NGOs, to see how best to get this message across mm -hmm. to our women uh, to go to hospital early because this is a, a treatable disease. And also we know that um, with COVID-19, cancer has taken a backstage, as you said. Uh, but unfortunately, cancer patients are, cancer is like a chronic disease and patients are prone to a severe form of COVID-19. And the more reason why we should uh, uh, continue treating it early so that we don't wait when it's too late and when they get COVID-19, then they really suffer. And w when you speak of early, what do you mean? So cancer goes in stages. There's stage one, stage two, that is early stage. And then there's late stage, which is stage three and four. Mm -hmm. So stage one and two is really curable. Um, and um, the treatment options are there. While in stage three and four, then the chances of it coming back are, is higher, even after treatment. One of the basic questions has been what causes cancer? Do we have a definite answer that A, B, C, and D cause cancer? 70% um, of the cancers, no one knows the cause. It can get a child, an adult, and even an elderly person. Uh, but say for breast cancer, there are common risk factors. Mm -hmm. uh, one is um, having fewer children or no children at all. Secondly, is r uh, lack of breastfeeding your children. You are encouraged to, to breastfeed your children for at least six months to a year. That is, a pro is, is protective to the mother. The other risk factor is just being a woman. Many women, we are all at risk of breast cancer as we grow older. In fact, above 40, the risk increases. So we still get breast cancer in younger women. Another risk factor is uh, family history. So if maybe your mother, your grandmother, or your aunt, we call them first degree relatives, if they had cancer, then the chance of you getting cancer is higher. Um, another risk factor is uh, prolonged use of uh, oral contraceptive pills. And we are seeing a worrying trend in our young girls at school mm -hmm. using uh, those pills uh, to prevent pregnancy. So we, we encourage them not to use pills at that early age. Let um, the people using pills use it just to plan their family. And uh, if you really wor worried about conceiving and you are not in you're not, for example, married, then you can look for alternative ways of planning your family, like abstinence, using protection, instead of, instead of using the oral contraceptives when you are very young. Why is um, a cancer treatment and, and care very expensive? Because cancer is a complex disease. 
it is not just one disease. It's very complex. It has very many aspects. In terms of treatment, you'll involve many, many specialties because the treatment is multidisciplinary. So you, and then the other thing is that the symptoms of cancer mimic other diseases. They look like other diseases. So before a patient really gets to the oncologist, they've passed through many healthcare workers who are treating them for other issues. And uh, by the time it's detected to be cancer, then the patient has to go for a biopsy. A biopsy costs money, so you're involving the pathologist who is going to, re to review these slides in the lab and confirm it's cancer. From there, you may need a surgeon if it's early stage, then there's a cost to it. Um, apart from the surgeon, you need a counselor, you need a nurse, you need a nutritionist, you need an oncologist. So it's very complex. It's not like malaria, maybe you even go to the GP they give you oral medication and you get well. Cancer is very complex and because it involves many different specialties and then places where you seek for help are fewer, so patients end up spending more money because of trying just to navigate and getting to the right people to treat the cancer. And are there any mitigation efforts to ensure that those who are not able to afford this kind of treatment do um, uh, get it? Uh, definitely, uh, one is the, with the rolling out of uh, universal health care being piloted in certain counties. Um, people are able just to go to the counties for screening and that will be for free. Mm -hmm. Even some of basic diagnosis may be done in the counties. We also have um, um, the cancer um, chemotherapy centers that have been uh, put up by the Ministry of Health. About 10 centers all across the country and patients can get treatment there. So you see that makes it quite affordable. Apart from that, um, the National Hospital Insurance Fund has an oncology package to support the cancer patients. And the best way to reduce cost of treating cancer is to get early diagnosis because with early diagnosis, you will not uh, need uh, complex treatments which are expensive. And some of the complex treatments like radiotherapy and chemotherapy tend to be a little bit more expensive and they're not widely available in the country. And the other things that there's also infrastructure for cancer centers, which is also expensive. And you, you find this translates to a high cost of treatment. Do you think that cancer is currently getting the attention that it requires? I think so. I mean, the Okay, we are not yet there where we want to be as a country, but our government has made uh, major strides to try just to, one, just recognizing cancer is, is a problem. We have an arm um, in the Ministry of Health that has uh, really been working uh, on, like we already have the cancer, um, National Cancer Screening Guidelines. Yes. We also have the National Cancer Treatment uh, Protocols that have been put and they're all available online, so somebody can log in and just view the common symptoms of cancer, how do you go about it, depending on the level of the hospital. We also have the, uh, the building of the human capacity. Um, we have universities now training uh, cancer specialists, University of Nairobi, Moi Teaching, Moi University. We even have other universities training technical people who handle like radiotherapy. Uh, say Jomo Kenyatta University and the Technical University is all, almost starting a program in training what we call medical physicists. So there's a lot. Uh, in terms of infrastructure, uh, there are plans underway to build, uh, to put up actually complete cancer centers in Mombasa, Nakuru, uh, Kisumu, Kisi, and um, my teaching and referral hospital will also be soon starting. Uh, we have two national uh, referral hospitals, Kenyatta National Hospital and Jomo Ke I mean Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital, all offering cancer services. So I will say there's, uh, there's a lot that has happened in the past uh, maybe three years, mm -hmm. and these are things we never had uh, uh, before. But uh, we still need to build more capacity, we need to have more machines and train more people just in cancer care. And 
I want us to briefly talk about the engagement um, that you have mentioned that the government is having with the private sector. Uh, the Texas Cancer Center is one of the um, elite um, uh, players in this, but um, we have seen cases where some of these programs do not really resonate with the public because the talk out there is that most of these private sectors are out to to drive profits. Uh, how do you ensure that Kenyans uh, resonate with this um, this these policies, these um, things which are being introduced by the government in partnership with the private sector to ensure that uh, the the curve is flattened. Um, yeah, um, I think the public private partnership is 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 a good thing, and uh, these private private facilities are treating Kenyans, and. Um, they, they actually support government in terms of having uh, cancer care accessible to even more people. Mm -hmm. And um, with the government, they always will sit down in the private facilities and negotiate for better prices. So you, you, you'll be surprised, like say NHIF, the package, it will pay the same for both uh, government and private. So if the private facility is expensive, the patient has to top up and when the patients find the topping up is a bit too high, they, they will not uh, afford um, that hospital. Um, I'm sure they can still go to the public hospital where they can afford. Uh, but um, having said that, I think the private and public, they complement each other and um, also in terms of working together to, to create even more awareness, even in the grassroots, trying to build capacity in the grassroots so patients don't really have to travel long distances to get treatment in private hospitals. Are we going to probably see a situation where uh, insurance companies, um, I don't know whether they are doing it right now, um, insurance companies coming up with packages uh, that are, are addressing uh, diseases such as cancer? Yeah, I mean, insurances have been doing that um, in the past, supporting cancer patients. Most of the insurances that I know of, really, they, they do support and they complement the NHIF in terms of supporting that. Uh, but we still need them maybe to come up more and support the patients more in, in terms of supporting them even to complete the causes of treatment like chemotherapy and radiotherapy. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, and and b before, go, before we go, um, there is a rise in number of children who are being diagnosed with cancer in the country. Why is this and how are we able to probably uh, reverse this trend? Uh, okay, there's more awareness. Um, unfortunately, the symptoms of cancer in children mimic infections. In fact, they look like infections. Say leukemia. Children will come with fever, flu-like symptoms, uh, nose bleeding, which is a very common symptom. Children coming with brain tumors, they'll come complaining of a headache. And any child with fever will always have a headache. Um, they may vomit. Even malaria children would vomit. So because there is so much confusion in, in the way the symptoms are, they, they, they mimic the usual diseases, what will encourage mothers is that if your child is sick for more than two weeks and they're not responding to conventional treatment, it's always good to seek help. In fact, uh, like children will come with uh, swollen lymph nodes, you know this, we call them gae, glands in the neck, in the armpit, and they're being treated for TB. If your child doesn't respond to the TB treatment in two weeks' time, just seek for a second opinion. Because when children's cancer is uh, picked early, the cure rate is much more than for the adults. You'll be surprised the cure rate is even more than 80% in childhood cancers. And the more reason why the mothers need to be aware, the parents need to be aware, even the teachers, when you see this kid, all of a sudden they are not playing the way they are supposed to be playing. They are lying down. When the others go to play, they sit back and say, no, teacher, I feel tired. I'm having a headache. Don't just assume. Let them get checked. Catherine Yongesa? Yes. Thank you very much for yeah. um, joining us tonight.
Thank you. Th that was uh, uh, Catherine Yongesa, the CEO of the Texas Cancer Center.